Hello and welcome to our Thought for the Day for Thursday the 11th of March. I'm going to share a few thoughts about Psalm 115. It's quite short, but it's full of good things. This is one of the so-called Hallelujah Psalms. These are like hymns which would probably have been sung at the end of a meal, like the Passover. So it is rather moving to think that Jesus and his disciples probably sung this on the night before he was crucified. It's in a definite liturgical or antiphonal style, comprising sections spoken by the leader, alternating with answering sections spoken together by the others present. And because it's a hymn or a song, I'm going to read it not in one of the Bible versions, with which you might be familiar, but in a modern verse version, a poetry, written just a couple of years ago by the vicar of a church not far from here near Reading. I think it's rather effective like this, but I'm going to ask Sam to leave the normal version up on the screen so you can compare the two as we go and see how they fit together. So it goes like this, Psalm 115. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but glory to your name on high, full of truth and loving kindness, full of victory when we cry. Why is every nation asking, how can God be there at all? God is reigning high in heaven, finding joy in great and small. Gold or silver human idols, empty works of mortal mind, never speaking, never sensing, never breathing, deaf and blind, never walking, vain and voiceless, dead to sense and sight and sound. Cold and lifeless are their makers, soulless in devotion bound. House of Israel, house of Aaron, all whose faith is in the Lord, trusting in the help of God who is our shield and great reward. God remembers us forever, all the faithful, great and small. House of Israel, house of Aaron, God will bless us, one and all. May the Lord increase his blessing, bless you and your seed from birth, blessed together by the maker of the sky and sea and earth. Though the dead and silent spirits never praise the Lord above, we will pour eternal blessing to the Lord, the God of love. So what's this about? The writer starts, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory meaning that all the good stuff that happens around us we can't take credit for. Instead, we should give the praise to God. But the writer then asks the question, which is very pertinent today. Why do people say, where is God when bad things happen? Well, God is in heaven, of course. In other words, in a difficult time like this, people ask, why isn't God intervening? Don't they know that God is in heaven? in charge as ever. God can do what their idols can't do. He's in control in a way that the idols or the gods of non-believers can't be. The psalmist scorns man-made objects. And so the next section gives a very colorful picture of the idols made by the hands of men. The psalmist says, they have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see, ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell, and so on. They are dumb, inanimate, impersonal, and ultimately meaningless. And then we get to something which I find quite frightening. Verse 8 says, those who make them will be like them, and so will all those who trust them. In other words, people who yearn for things like that are shallow and meaningless, and will themselves become shallow and meaningless. It's quite a threat. Today, many people still revere physical objects in a remarkable way. Think of the enormous gold-covered statues of Buddha throughout Southeast Asia, or the icons, the statues, and the shrines of other religions, including parts of the Christian church. So we may think we don't have idols anymore, but of course we do, in different ways. If we think we will achieve peace and fulfillment by becoming famous or beautiful, then we are in danger of creating our own idols. If we think our problems will be solved by having 
lots more friends on Facebook, or getting super fit, or rich, or successful, then we're also likely to be mistaken and disappointed. None of those things can give us what God can. Unfailing love, a real identity, a new family and a new purpose. No, the psalmist warns us that if we pursue superficial things, we shall ourselves become superficial. We sometimes say we are what we eat, which is true enough. But the message here is that we actually become like the things we look for in our lives. There's a real contrast here between the picture of the idols and Jesus himself as he's shown in the New Testament. The idol is dead. It can't see or speak. But Jesus is alive, triumphantly alive. Compare the lifeless idol, or nearer to home, compare our empty ambitions with how Jesus is portrayed, for example, in the I Am sayings in John's Gospel, which we were looking at just a few months ago. Jesus is called the way, the life, the light, and the living water. What a contrast with dead idols. The second half of the psalm then moves to a blessing. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. It goes on, he will bless those who fear him, both great and small. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Praise the Lord. So today, may we all have a blessed day. May we remember to put our idols aside, be grateful for all we have, and praise the Lord in all we see and do.